showing us. Amen, church? Um, being a believer in God, we know there are signs. God says in uh, Acts chapter, let's, let's go pray for the word. Father God, bless our word this morning. Father God, you speak to me, not, not me that I speak, but cause my will that you speak through me, Holy Spirit. And Father God, you bless our word, Father God, and be transparent. And Father God, what you are saying to the church this morning, Lord Jesus, let it be your will. Because you are the will in the will. Amen. In Jesus' name, and we all say. Amen. Amen. Turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 17. This is not following my word, but this is what God said. Amen. And we need to hear this again and again and again because we need to stay attentive to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Amen. This is God's word. This is not Pastor Bird's word. This is not about Pastor Bird. It's about God's voice and God's vision. Amen, church? God's provision. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass. God's promise. In the last days, saith the Lord, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on the handmaid I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall Prophesy. Hallelujah, church. Yeah. Prophecy is God's word. Prophecy is warning and protection. Amen, church? Yeah. Prophecy, warning, um, is about protection. God's protection for us is for us to see things that's coming ahead of us. The word says that God is our teacher and He will, Holy Spirit, will warn us and He will use His scriptures. That's why we need to know His word, church. He will show us your scriptures because his scriptures is the manifestation of his word. Hallelujah. Because yeah. anytime God speaks, we need to take that context of the word and put it on the tabletops of our heart and observe what God is saying to the church. Amen. We need to observe and uh Lie. Lie. Amen. So when God speaks, it's not me speaking, so don't look at me. Just listen what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There was, uh, there was a dream that I had in the presence of the Lord this couple days ago. and I, thought, I don't know if I talked about it last week. That the presence of the Lord and the manifestation of God's word and the call upon this church and upon you as the members of this church that God will use you yes. as a vessel for his kingdom. Yes. Amen. And anytime God wants to bless you, He can give you a dream and a vision. And, and it's precious to be in His presence. Because in His presence, I find joy. In His presence, I find peace. Amen? I get excited this morning when I got out of it. Thank you, Jesus. I cannot wait for this morning for the service to start. I was up 2 o'clock in the morning. But now I looked at him and said, he thought I was taking a shower. Well, I was watering the plants, talking to Jesus. Get up in the morning and I water the plans for God and I said, talk to the Holy Spirit. You know, every every Sunday is God's day. Amen, church? Amen. Or every day is God's day. Hallelujah. Yes. So when you look at the word of God, God said that He will pour out His Spirit and not pray. You know, we God's word said it shall come to pass. It's been, it's already happening. Tineri Mahafala, he could be our one of our guest speakers. Tineri Mahafala called Pastor Bird. He said, Pastor Bird, I'm nobody. Oh, welcome to the club, my brother. We're all nobodies telling everybody about somebody. somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when he called me, he said, Pastor, why God gave me the dream? I know about it. Why me? Because God looking at our hearts, church. Notice, when our hearts is good, then God can talk to us. This is why I think the message was this morning that we need to come back to our first love. Our hearts are far away. We say we love you with our mouth, but our hearts say far away from God. I'm not making any sense. Amen. You can say, I love you, Lord. <laughs> it's not a song, right? Yeah. I love you, Lord. But I still like punch his face. That's not how we love the Lord first and we love our neighbors. That's a commandment. Amen? Amen. So we're going to love God with all our hearts. We're going to love our neighbor. So 
So when God speaks, you look at Denari's heart because Denari, rather he was he was threatened because he went for same, he was against same sex marriage. He was uh, he was going to lose his job because of same sex marriage because he would vote against that, and he's a, a worker of the state. So his life was threatened, his uh, job was in jeopardy, but he stood for righteousness. Yeah. He stood. I mean, I want people to stand. On a time of temptation and trials to stand in righteousness. Amen? And when he stood for righteousness, this is why I told him, this is particular, this is why God gave you, but you're not me, because God is looking at your heart. God is looking at our hearts, church. Amen? Amen. And when our hearts is good and, and, and good with God and one with God, God will show you things. This is how dreams are visions. Observe it and fly what God telling us to do. As a church and as an individual. Amen, church? Amen. Hallelujah. So this is God's plan and purpose and why our hearts is very important. We thank God for the word this morning. It's, uh, give us, okay, if you guys writing this down, write this down. It's going to be this week and next week. Next week I'll be positioning for your blessings. This week going to be, write this down, how to embrace the blessings of adjustment. How to embrace the blessings of adjustment. You know, before you get your blessings, you gotta adjust. You gotta be uh, in the right place. You gotta right, be in the right position. So this week is just gonna be um, the first part of the two parts that I need to bring out to the church. These past weeks we've been talking about prosperity. Amen. Yes. Prosperity. The keys of prosperity is to seek Him diligently. Can I get an amen? Yes, amen. Amen. I don't care what you're going through in the storm. Anything that is trying to affect who you are, don't let your storm push you off course but let the storms push you back to the cross bring you back on course amen. can I get an amen because what will get tested what will get tried what will get stop in the natural and the supernatural in our walk with Jesus everything is the perfection of the characteristic of who God is in my life amen the characteristics of God's word is part of my life because I need to apply what he says I need to do Every one of us has to do the same thing. Application of God's word is applied by your daily living. Everything that you do and everything that you say needs to reverence Him. Amen? Amen. Because when you when you're out of here, people will look at you, what should you go? So we gotta reverence the Lord. Amen. It's a contract. Yes. Hallelujah. It, it's it's not an option. We, we as Christians, we gotta forgive. We cannot not have um hidden agendas. We gotta surrender, submit told it to God and then the blessings will come. So this morning is how to embrace the blessings of adjustment. And everything that God's word it has to be the right adjustments according to his plan and his purpose according to his word. There's something need to die which is the old man, the first Adam and you know, there's many, many times when, when, I, when I look at my life, and you can look at your life as, as my old man had to die. My old man died 19 years ago in prison. I, I, I needed to go to prison. It was a blessing. It was a submission. It was a blessing in these guys. And the word is going to show you how your situation is a blessing. Now, if, if you're in the flesh, and I'm praying that your mind will be receptive to the Holy Spirit, Amen? Huh? The word of God is that it, the word is a blessing in disguise, but it's not going to be a blessing if you're not going to if you're not going to understand spiritual things, spiritual walk, spiritual walk, spiritual obedience to God the Father. So when I when speaking of things, there has to be an adjustment. But your spirit man gotta catch up because your flesh not gonna get it. Am I making any sense? In your flesh, you're going, what are you talking about? Your flesh not going to understand because you've been a flesh. But when you're in the spirit, you can catch them. Can I get amen? amen? The latter kills what the spirit gives amen. life. Can I get amen? amen? The latter, I can read the Bible all day. I ain't, ain't going to get them. If the spirit not in me, then I can get them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So there's something need to die. And I'm going to use Abraham as an example of principle of what God wanted to sentence to death in his life. And what God has principles as an apostle of Paul the Apostle, as he's writing that there's something in you, every one of us, need to die today. Amen? 
So we need to make that right adjustments. That we make the right adjustments so I can get embrace the blessing that is promised for us. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. And it might not come today, but you need to make the adjustment today in order to get the blessings tomorrow. Can I get an amen? amen? Hallelujah. So the thing you're going to adjust now, that all everything will drop in your lap. It's, it's going to take um, time and adjustment to make the right choices so you can receive your blessings. God wants to bless His people. God wants you to be prosperous. And God wants you to be um, um, uh, obedient to His word. Obedience is one of the biggest things that we all, as Christians, need to understand. And our, our work can be about obedience. Everybody know about Abraham. It was obedience. It wasn't a sacrifice. It was his obedience to the Holy Spirit, to God the Father. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to put my finger down. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I feel like I'm scolding everybody. Yeah. I'm going to put my finger down. I'm going to put my finger at me first. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How to embrace the blessings of adjustment. Turn with me to Genesis 22, verse 16. Genesis 22, verse Let's all rise in the reading of the word, please. Genesis 22, verse 16. And said by myself, have I sworn, saith the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hath not withheld my thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee seeds as stars of the heavens, and as the sand which is upon the seashores, and thy seeds shall prosper, and the gates of his enemies and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. You can all sit down. Thank you, Jesus. This is our introduction chapters that there had to be an adjustment and you want, I want to try to explain that there was something had to die uh, in Abraham's life, but in obedience, you just heard multiplication of blessings because of his obedience. Amen? We need to be obedient in adjust, making the right adjustments. And I want to I want to share with you how the adjustment became a blessing to us. It went from nations to generations. Come on, somebody. Amen. It was from Abraham's blessings. He's obedient went from generation to generation to this very generation. We're just the seeds of what according to what we just read. It was a seed that was planted in hope, his obedience, multiplication. Even today we're blessed because of Abraham's submission to the adjustments of God's voice. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The adjustments of God in our lives produces blessings. The adjustments according to God's plan and His purpose, according to His word this morning. The blessings is ours, but there has to be an adjustment this morning in our life. It's going to produce, it's going to produce blessings. 
because it is God's work. And God, I want to show you how the blessings begin, how we're using God's word as an adjustment in our life today. It, if it, like I said, it might not seem like a blessing at the beginning because the Father, God the Father, had something to sentence to death this morning. He had something was sentenced to death in Abraham's life. It was an adjustment we need to make as an individual, as a church, to make the proper adjustments according to God's plan in our personal life. We need to make the right adjustments in our life to receive the blessing. It will produce blessings. God's word. Amen, Amen church? Amen. Like I said, it may not seem like a blessing right now. We don't understand, but why God can why God can sentence? Why God had to sentence to death in Abraham's life? But if you, you gotta remember, if Abraham he had to listen to God, but if he didn't withhold the, the voice of the Lord, he wouldn't have got his blessings. It was his obedience to God's voice that he was determined to do what God told him to do. And he made the, he made the he had the right response to God the Father. You will see the manifestation of the blessings of God. He killed his son to kill his son Abraham to kill his son. God spoke to him again a second time. So there was two times I, I want to show you that there was two times God had to speak to Abraham. The first one was for him to sacrifice. His son, he's only begot the son according to what we read. Now in, in the beginning of, of the first of chapter 23 from the beginning, it was God speaking to, to Abraham and Abraham woke up early in the morning. He gathered the sticks and a sacrifice and he took his son with him as a sacrifice. He heard God's voice. He never withheld anything that God told him. Not knowing that in his obedience, but he sacrificed that he did for God. In, in his submission to God's voice, he never withheld anything that God said for him to do. Church, we need to sacrifice There's some stuff that I wanted to share this morning. There's some stuff we got to die to according to the, the sacrifice that Abraham did. It's the same sacrifice we got to do in our personal life. Something needs to die this morning because God was talking to Abraham. That was the first step, but there's the second step in the form of repentance. There's a second one in the form of repentance at the cross. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. The second time in our lives is symbolic. I would say it's, it's what it, the second the second thing you need to die in our life too is one. Well. It's symbolic. To the resurrection to Jesus Christ. Once you hear the Father's sentence of death the first time, then He comes back to speak to you again in resurrection. He will speak again in the second time to resurrection. So we look at the Old Testament. There was a first death. There was a first day of the sacrifice in Abraham's life that in his seeds that the whole nation was blessed. Come on, somebody. Amen. The first sacrifice was that Abraham. And Abraham's sacrifice was the first day in true his son Jesus Christ. Is God gonna, gonna show us today in our personal life? The second day is at the resurrection at the cross. Come on, somebody. It is a sacrifice that was already paid for us. At the cross that God has given His only begotten Son, that the second death, it wasn't a sacrifice that we need to sacrifice. It's about obedience that God has given us the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So God is speaking about the resurrection in a form of the resurrection. Now, watch what comes out of the resur resurrection. In verse 16 and 17. Go back to um, Genesis. Go to Genesis 22. Let us go back to the resurrection of the blessings that God has sent to them. There was an adjustment. 
of God the Father was setting was sentencing to death. And there's gonna be four there's gonna be four items of the resurrection. But it, the verses seven sixteen and seventeen, it is the blessings of adjustment in Abraham's life that there's four things I'm gonna describe that was the blessings through his obedience. Number one is I will greatly bless thee. Okay, let's go to verse 16. And said, By myself have I sworn, this is God, said the Lord, because thou hast done this and hast not withheld your son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee and multiply thee and uh, multiplying i will multiply thy seeds and the stars of the heavens and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seeds shall possess the gates of his enemies now the blessings number one i will greatly bless abraham because of his obedience number two I will multiply his descendants. Number three, I will give thee the gates of thy enemies. Number four, all the all nations of the earth shall bless thee. So in, in God's sentencing to death, because of his obedience, it was it, like the resurrection in the, in the resurrection of his obedience was a blessing adjustment of God sentencing, sentencing to death and when he died the blessings because of his obedience the blessings was in verse 17 now look at verse 18 what is God's word saying in verse 18 it's operable it's an upper verse for, um, phrase in verse 18. Verse 18 says, In thy seed shall all thy nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. So in, in the blessings, because we observe what God says in, the, in that phrase, that because of his obedience, God's word said, the operative verse is that because you have obeyed my voice, what voice? The voice of God sentencing of death on his son Isaac and the willingness of Abraham to adjust to the voice of God. How to embrace spiritual change is to embrace the voice of God God says because you have obeyed my voice and his response to God because of his response to God God said that I will bless you there's something that was sacrificed to Abraham's life there was an right adjustment that he obeyed God. There was a sentencing to death that he needed to submit and trust in God that he did what God told him to do. To sacrifice his son. There's something in us need to die this morning. A sacrifice in obedience. It's not about the sacrifice. It's about the obedience to hear his voice. I don't know what you need to die to this morning, church. But I know that I need to die to some of the stuff that I been been um uh, been stuff that was in my life. I need to die in order to operate and function and be in position for my blessings. Because he said, if I obey his voice, the blessing he'll bless me, he gonna bless my kids, he gonna bless the nation. I might not be here when this blessing is still going. I might not be the one over here but be the seeds and the descendants of my kids and my grandkids. It started from my great-grandfather who was a pastor. My grandfather was a pastor. My dad was a pastor. Oh my God, I came on pastor. I wanted to go surf. I sacrificed to surf. But now I sacrifice 
There's, there's the change of value. There's a sacrifice. That's, there's something had to die in me first, church, in order for me to to to, to grasp and to hold on to the place. I'm not talking about uh, financial blessings. I'm not talking about uh, material blessings. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about God's love from generation to generation to preach the gospel of His Son, Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. It's not about the stuff. It's about the gospel that was brought down from Abraham. If you look at Abraham's seed, he said, you will be blessed and your seed and your descendants, it goes all the way down to us today. Are we in the right position for his blessings? I want to be right there. I want to embrace his blessings. Amen? I want to be obedient because I want to be obedient to his call in our life. And making being obedient is making Jesus number one. And all the blessings going to come because I need to make my adjustments like Abraham in obedience to God's voice. I need to die so he can live. Amen? Yeah. I might, sometimes I got to lay some hands on my sick self. Come out of me! <laughs> in order to make the right adjustments. Can I get an amen? Nobody is perfect. We're not living in a perfect world. But we serve a perfect God. He's the same yesterday, today, if God don't change. His word don't change. From the day of the Old Testament in Genesis, from the beginning of time, and every blessing, every seed, every nation is blessed because of God. This, this generation will be going on for years of generation to generation. It is the adjustment that we all need to need, they need to make this morning. If something needs to die in my life, if something has to die in your life, I don't know what it is, only you know what needs to die. Submission to God's voice. The surrender and the sacrifice. It's not about the sacrifice. When God's called, when God's using you, be obedient to the call. God wants to use you. God wants to bless you. You have to be in the right place and you got to embrace His blessing. Because of Abraham's obedience, He said, Because you have done this, verse 16, because Abraham has done this, I'm going to bless you and your descendants and it will multiply. I like to see my grandkids blessed. I like to see my great grandkids blessed. Amen? Amen. Everything that we have has come from Him. But it is Him that I'm grateful. It is Him that I sacrifice my life so the rest of the generation can live. My values change. Our values should change. Our values should change. I, with everything that I had, I gave up. You guys know my story. I gave up my career to serve the law. I was making a whole complete meal, only making french fries. But I'm happy. Sacrifice. When God called Pastor Bird, I gave up my career to serve him. Come on, somebody. Our okay, value is going to change. The more, you, the more you obey God and the sacrifices that you need to make, God's still going to take care of your blessings. God's still going to take care of your finances. Come on, somebody. God's still going to take care of you. You can try and test him. God is a God who shall not lie. He can prove to you that he loves you and he will take care of you. He is the Alpha and Omega. He's your provider. He will take care of you no matter what you're going through. Sacrifice. Obedience. God is calling this morning for us to submit and surrender to his voice of obedience. Thank you, Jesus.